La -dee -dee. La -dee -doo. <coughs> okay, there's no one here because I've never really done this before. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm here to code, and I figure if there's an audience, maybe it'll actually force me to focus, and uh, I don't know, maybe some experts and other smart people can join, and we can actually collaborate, which would be fun. I can share some hot tips, and others can share some hot tips with me, and I think that would be pretty cool. Um, yeah, so uh, what are we working on today? Um, I have a air quality monitor. It's pretty cool. It's a little box. It's an aware. Aware.com. Uh, actually, let me make sure, see if I can. Where do chats come through? There we go. Cool. Yeah, I've got an aware. Let's go ahead and just check it out. And it's this dope little device. Mine's cooler. It has a wooden panel on it. But uh, yeah, it tells you all sorts of interesting um, stats about the air quality in your house, like things like dew and temp and humidity and VOCs and CO2, which don't put this in your bedroom if you have a small bedroom. Turns out your CO2 levels can get pretty high. And recently there's been a bunch of fires in Oregon, where I live, and the aware was very grouchy with me and reported the air quality was terrible. And even though they have an app, and the app's great, and it kind of lets you see your scores, I wanted to be able to see my data longer term. And they have an API that I could use, but I don't want to use that. Like this thing hosts an HTTP server on it, and I want to scrape my own data, and I want to store my own data, and eventually I want to take that data and um, pipe it into some sort of time chart and that time chart should be able to you know just the duration the window how it bends or histograms different intervals and I think that would be pretty sweet and you know I won't be throttled or need some sort of silly account I'm super into you know owning my own data so uh, uh, you know it hosts an HTTP server it's just available on my local network looks like this and I'm gonna be essentially doing you know an API call at some regular interval from here and then loading it into timescale DB timescale DB which is essentially Postgres <laughs> but uh, uh, with some first class um, you know time series functions never used it but I don't know I like Postgres and I figured if this thing is optimized for fast time series data queries then yeah, I'll give it a shot. But this isn't the interesting part. The interesting part, hopefully, will be OCaml. So I guess I should have said, I'm learning OCaml, and that's really um, what I'm focused on here. Sweet. All right. Let's get going. Um, so I'm going to come over here and go to source. I should probably make this a little bit bigger. Uh, this is not my usual development system. And because it's not my usual development system, I am <laughs> brand new on this box. But I gotta clone this repo. So I've already started doing a little bit of OCaml here. And I'm calling this project Fresh Aware. So I'm gonna go ahead and clone this mother trucker. Cool. I'm gonna CD into Fresh Aware. Great, and the first thing I want to do is get the editor going. So the OCaml team recently released a extension called OCaml Platform. Let's see if I already have it installed. Installed OCaml? No, okay, so I gotta install it. OCaml Platform. It's like a half decent IDE experience right out of the box, which is pretty nice. Uh, and then, let's see, I probably also need to install Easy, which is the uh, Reason ML slash OCaml package manager builder thingy. It's kind of like NPM ish, but for a reason. And I don't think I have. 
I wonder if I have yarn installed. It looks like you can just install it from there. So why don't I go ahead and just pull open a shell here. Oops. Yeah, whatever. Okay, um, yarn, global, add, easy. Cool. I do have it. That's great. And that's important because inside of the package JSON, I have specified a version of OCaml that I want to use. Oh, it's somewhere on here, 4.10, which isn't the bleeding edge OCaml at the time of talking, <laughs> um, but it is the version I want, so cool. Um, I have a tool called RAD, which is essentially like, uh, essentially my version of Make. Um, looks like uh, it just has a simple interface. You export something called, come on for crying out loud. You export some, again for crying out loud. This is my keyboard, fold all. An object called tasks, and the keys are the name of the tasks, and tasks can be dependent, blah, blah, blah. But I preferred this because it, um, unlike make, which is like, you know, got its own little DSL and tightly coupled to bash. This is not coupled to bash, it's coupled to TypeScript, and it runs in the Deno runtime which is essentially V8 with an embedded TypeScript compiler, which is kind of cool. And it uh, looks like I don't have Deno installed, so let's go fix that. Um, I'm using this because I do a couple of other things beyond just what's provided from the OCaml community using, using Easy or Dune. So let's see if that... Uh, oh, I actually probably need to install Red. Oh, I already have the tab open. Install. Oh, look, I wrote good docs. Good for me. Good for me. Uh, I think the latest version is... I don't want to do it like that. I want to do it like this. Yeah, we'll just use latest for now. I usually like to use um, an actual versioned copy of... Deno executables, but that's fine. Cool, so I've got rad installed, I've got easy installed. Um, I think I just need to run easy first to start downloading and compiling uh, all of my dependencies. So for those who aren't aware, OPAM is the, what is it, OCaml package manager. And if you <laughs> use NPM style, you know, dependencies and dev dependencies, if you list OPAM in there, it doesn't reach out to the NPM registry. It reaches out to OPAM, which is pretty great. I found it uh, a pretty good UX finding packages, and packages are first uh, in finding docs. Docs are first class in OCaml, which is pretty cool. I know very little OCaml. <laughs> I'm still figuring it out. I've read some of the book, um, but yep, that's what I'm here struggling to learn. And so that's going to go like download all the stuff, and Easy should give me a sandbox version of OCaml rather than using some system level OCaml, which is pretty cool. Uh, unlike, you know, NPM, uh, where your dependencies are just local to a project, OCaml, like most other programming languages, packages kind of all share uh, a, a standard namespace, and by default it's not sandbox, like you install packages onto a switch, like some global version of that compiler. Um, Easy makes that nice for me, so it can all just be bundled inside of my project, and that's cool. And so why don't we actually start looking at the stuff. So I've written a couple files already. Um, yep, I have written, no, 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 we don't want to go there yet. Uh, what have I written so far? I've written an API call that... I've written a server, and when the server starts, uh, for whatever reason, I was dinking around with the server, it uh, opens up just an HTTP port, and I can call it, and it will go fetch data from the aware endpoint, and then after it gets data from the aware endpoint, I then want to, you know, almost like a little ETL, right? Pipe it down into Postgres. Uh, so here is my you know, binary application entry point. And 
uh, I kick it off right here. So um, let unit, which essentially says just do effect and ignore. And ignore says take the promise rough, you know, from this and just ignore it. But do this, you know, async effect. So uh, run like kind of. It's not. I don't know if it's technically an event loop. Maybe it actually is an event loop. I don't know. I gotta figure that out soon. Um, whatever. Like start <laughs> start up an event loop and do a bunch of async stuff. So uh, the first thing let's see that I do is I call server and I call that with a named arg and I start the server on port 8000 and immediately I come in here and the first thing this function does is call let's see with connection and I explicitly annotated a type here but I probably didn't need to let's well the compiler's not done installing yet so I'm actually going to give it a little bit of time and okay so with connection calls libdb create connection and right now I'm just passing in localhost that's fine and um, that should give me a connection handle back and because I want to uh, continue down the promise chain I'm taking that connection and I'm wrapping it in another promise that seems like I shouldn't have to do that, right? Like, let's see, this is the bind operator, and the bind operator takes a promise, which is the left side expression, and a function, and it should, and the, yeah, 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 and that function then has to translate back to Elwit. Actually, I can just hover this. Oh, for crying out loud, I can't co cover it because Merlin hasn't downloaded yet. Whatever, it needs to return another promise in, with that value contained. Okay, that makes sense. So what's going on here? Uh, error building, what? What do you want from me? Easy, x and due to errors above, build log building, m4, m4 not found? What the hell's m4? What are we talking about here? m4, that must be a dependency of something. Uh, let's see if that's over on OPAN. OPAN. Packages. I usually develop on a Mac today. I decided to get serious about going back to Linux. And here I am. Okay, so M4 is just some other library. Oh, GNU. Look at that. This is like a big deal. I can't. Uh oh. GNU is an M4 implementation of the traditional Unix macro processor. Ah, Unix macro processor. Interesting. Yeah, it's mostly S4 compatible, though, some extensions, blah, 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 blah. File shown. Uh, expanding macros. This sounds very, like, C ish. Okay, used by autoconf. What a bunch of malarkey. Okay, so, uh, uh, yeah, um, Maybe this actually expects M4 um, on my system. sudo apt git install m4. I wonder if I actually need. Uh, I don't think I got my password right. I don't think anyone's joined yet. No one knows that I exist. I'm the only person watching my channel. I am cool. <laughs> that's fine. This is mainly. That's for me as much as anyone else. Uh, all right, setting up M4. There we go. Sick. All right, let's do this again. Easy. It ain't easy. Being cheesy. All right. Cool. So you know that's sick. Uh, we got ourselves a nice little um, uh, connection to Postgres here. And uh, all right. So once we get that. Uh, Postgres connection. What is this? On con? Oh, on connect. Okay, so yeah, yeah. When we actually get a HTTP connection, we are going to call this function, which is the result of calling create callback. This is like some boilerplate named code. Uh, let's call it create server handler and you know interestingly you know I pre-bind resources here 
Um, I'm told, or I've heard, OCaml has algebraic effects. Uh, and this actually probably is the, pl it, it actually might have been more correct to um, create the resources here. I don't know. I like creating resources as early as I can and then passing them through regardless of like, you know, the language. Hmm. Hmm. But anyways, uh, 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 yeah, I'm binding this DB connection uh, to this handler and it'll just be like ready to go anytime a request comes in. So anytime a, re a request comes in, it's going to call on sense request and you can see I then just pass in uh, 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 con that connection to on sense request and that's cool so you know if someone wants to get a sensor reading they'll just have a DB handle ready to rock and then here we go uh, uh, now that I've got some resources I'm just gonna say hey uh, we're good to go which is a lie <laughs> uh, we're not necessarily good to go yet I'm just inducing an effect right here writing to standard out and I create the server Cool. You know, I wonder if server create has like a on ready because this would otherwise, you know, uh, be more appropriate then. Uh, and I would like to do it there. Um, yeah, let's look for that. Um, I'm using this cool console log and pastel, these libs from the uh, reason community, reason native. I should probably just look at that again, reason native. Reason Native is like a pretty cool thing. It's trying to help us <laughs> X TypeScript developers just get more comfortable with, um, you know, a camel environment and ML syntax. And I've done some ELM before, so it's not like totally foreign, but I'm not proficient. Uh, and this, I don't know, I, I like what they're doing. It doesn't seem like they have a very active community yet, and it's been going for a couple years. I, I don't know. I'm wishing them the best, and I'll try and pitch in where I can. But anyway, yeah, like here's Pastel. The you, uh, reason is kind of JSX friendly. React is like a first class citizen in the language, which is kind of interesting. Um, but I'm using it in OCaml because reason's just sugar on top of OCaml. God damn it. Looks like it failed again. Sorry for using profanity. PG config. Okay. Uh, Dang, um, I only want the Postgres tools. Uh, it's kind of obnoxious that someone's relying on these native tools to build these packages. I happen to know that you don't have to use, you know, something like PSQL, uh, although it is more performant, or libpq with Postgres if you want to use it. Whatever, it looks like this is tightly coupled to it. Ubuntu, install psql. Uh, I don't want all of. Uh, uh, I actually needed something else. PG config. PG. There's like I guarantee they uh, ins give you different dev packages to um, install just what you need. PostgreSQL de devel. Devil, Devel. All right. Apt get install. Ah oh, man. Yeah, there we go. What? Uh. Yeah. Maybe that's the one I want. Debian packaging. Definitely a thing. Not the worst, not the best. Maybe not everyone's favorite. PG config, Yahoo! How about psql? No. But good news for me, I don't need psql because most of the stuff I'm going to be doing here is going to be in Docker. In fact, let's make sure the DB even comes up. Let's see, rad DB. Blast! Deno not found? Man, I'm pretty sure it actually is found. Um, I just need to restart my editor. It's, hey man. Command Q, bro. Be cool. 
Okay, okay, let's just create a new tab. Oh, bugger off. That sucks. Let me go ahead and fix something real quick. So, and, and it says basher sh. Uh, cat. Oh, I don't know, let's just do an L, uh, LSAL. Basher.sh. Well, that sure looks like a thing to me. Uh, dot bashrc. That's cool. Let's do him. Bash RC. Wow, that just looks pretty empty now, doesn't it? What is going on? Oh, it's kind of incompetent. Bash RC. Maybe let's try. Do a little of that action. All right, all right. Let's make sure it just got linked. Ah, okay. Yay, Dano's back. All right, all right, all right. Uh, uh, <laughs> I think I might know what's up. Let me do one more. Uh, dot files. And bash profile. I just dinked around with this today, which was a mistake, knowing that I planned on trying to stream a little bit. Cool! Yeah, that was definitely a thing. Wow, 142. I didn't know it got a minor patch. Very cheeky, Dr. Jones. Ah, tool chain initialization failed. Cannot load sandbox uh, manifest at source freshware easy. Man, that sucks. Why not? Uh, probably a camel platform. Ugh, okay. Yeah, so the reason this thing failed is because it needs me to... It shells out. It shells out to the OCaml language server, I've learned. And I'm pretty sure this is even like in their docs. So let's just go check out their docs. Oh, camel language server. Let's just try LSP. Yep. Cha 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 cha. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Okay. Oof. I don't know if I have global OPAM installed even. <laughs> I really did just set this up. Cool. Uh, that's fine. Now, I could sudo app install OPAM, um, but I think real world OCaml has a better idea. I just was, last time I like, yeah, you know, did this, I was just very pleased with, um, Oh, they actually do recommend it. Okay. La-dee-dee. All right, sure, fine. We'll do it. Oh, 436 megabytes. Get out of town. That's fine. So while that thing's going, we're going to go ahead and try starting the DB. I swear to God. Deno not found. Deno. Deno. Oh, okay. Sure. This is calling Deno internally. Let's just go look at that file. Mmm. 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 Which Deno? Man, where's my Deno instance? <laughs> uh, I guess I could look at uh, at C proc. I don't know the PID though. Gosh damn! It. Um, I feel like such a rookie right now. Let's try it. Not in my editor. Uh, actually, let's just reinstall as well. I've only installed a couple things here, right? 
Yeah, I know, dude. Just friggin' know what I want. <laughs> okay. And, uh... <clears throat> it was being cool. Alright, so let's try rad DB. Let's see. That's stalled there, but where is the actual deno executable? Is it? Deno. Like it. Yeah, that's it, right? So I should be able to just. Alright. No, oh, that's not a thing. It's a version. Classic. Um, I'm going to do maybe a little hack right now just so we can go about our business. Like, this isn't the problem I wanted to be focus focusing on. Copy. Let's see if this still works. Linux. Brit. There we go. Deno. Some bitch. Sorry, I didn't mean to use profanity. Uh, Alright, let's try this for like the hundredth time. Gotta find red file. Yeah! Great, I'm in the wrong directory. <laughs> cool. CD, CD source. Uh, you know, where are we going? Freshware, girl. Whoa. Oh, and this thing totally worked. So that's great. Red DB. Now, you can see that it had to go download a bunch of new stuff. Why? It had to go download a bunch of new stuff because in my rad file, um, I was importing a very specific version of uh, Red, and uh, these files uh, didn't exist inside the Deno cache, so I had to go pull those down and compile them async. And it did, it was successful in compilation, and it then tried to, um, check it out, I can do debug as well. It then went ahead and tried to connect to the, or start a database, and it failed because the docker daemon uh, apparently isn't started. Uh, I thought I had already installed docker. I did. Uh, so what's up? I guess I expected docker d to be... Well, son of a gun. There it is. So... Oh! Uh, right. Uh, permissions. Yeah, look at that. This also looks super jacked. <laughs> it's trying to do an HTTP post to a Unix socket. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. No, it got to the socket. All right. Var. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's just go back and read the Docker docs. What do I need to do? Install Docker. I gotta finish reading the instructions. I think is probably the bit. Yep, yep, yep. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, test. Come on. I wasn't actually reading. Support platforms installed per distro. Sure. Yeah, BTDT. Been there, done that, done that. Checked it. Looking good. Done that. I don't need a specific version. I'm cool. Install from a package. Nope. Uh, man, I don't need the convenience script, but actually that would have been nice. Aha! That is the winning ticket. So I don't think I'm allowed to access that socket using my user. And, mm -hmm. uh, crossing fingers. Mm -hmm. Blast! Okay. Uh, oh, I think when you add a group, <laughs> gotta read the docs. Uh, remember to log in and log back out for this to take effect. I'm pretty sure there's a way to, like, yeah, you know, not log in and log back out. Uh, let's just, uh, let's try it over here. I don't, this probably isn't gonna work. Blast. <sighs> uh, well, I don't want to stop the stream. Let's see. Linux. Mm. Git group no log out. <laughs> yeah. I'm assigning blah 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 blah. Horribly hacky, but you could use two layers of new group. 
I'll give you, alright, let's see. Poor thing, okay, I'll give you the current primary group. group <laughs> now. Interesting. I don't know if this is a good idea. 1,000! Great group ID. Now the thing is, the group that I want already exists. Which will switch you to that group as the pri... and add it to the list of groups returned by groups. Now that's a capital G. Oh, I think I'm making a terrible mistake. Let's just do it. New group docker. Wait, I did that all wrong. New group docker. Hey, look at that. Look at all those sweet groups. That could work. Holy guacamole. Nice work, Stack Overflow. What the heck? Okay, so that, like, uh, it probably didn't create a brand new group. It knew that the Docker group was 998. That's kind of cool. And then it just, like, uh, added it to my group set. Sick. So now I can do docker logs dash f. I think I named it fresh aware db. Ah, look at those wonderful docker logs. So sweet. And uh, this little buddy this should be a known API, but yeah, whatever. Cool, so now let's see if, uh, I'm actually, it's running in the background, I don't need another shell for it. Now let's continue on with the chlorophyll. Uh, Alright, so we got a server, and I was wondering earlier if the, oh, you know what, we didn't do, didn't install the, this little buddy. So many rabbit holes of stuff to do just to get started on a project. OPAM in it, and I would like to think that I already set up OPAM in my dot .files like a pro. Like a rock pro. Uh, I definitely don't want you to format my... I definitely do not want you to modify my bash profile. To best integrate with your system, some environment variables should be set. If you allow it to blah 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 blah. Yeah, don't touch my friggin' bash, bash profile, dude. Just get out of here. Otherwise, every time you want to access your open you don't need to run that. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and say no. I'm going to grab this text here. Uh, control C is not the same as copy. <laughs> uh, just Leave me alone. Uh, hook can be added to OPAM's to ensure the shell remains in sync with the OPAM environment when they are loaded. Set that up. Uh, sure. Alright, so I'm going to grab this and I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to go just briefly check my dot files. Ah, you're probably so bored. We're having a good time. Everybody relax. Good times are definitely happening. Uh, why 
a snake. Okay, fine. We're already doing the good stuff. Cool, 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 cool. All right, so then we got to come over here and do that. I don't think I actually ran this yet. We'll pan that. Cool. No switch currently set. I know. Oh, Pam. Switch, yeah. Is that helpful? <laughs> oh, Pam. Switch. Uh, oh, I see. That's the table. I don't like a uh, switch, you know? I forget how to create. Okay. Compiler. Yeah, that's cool. Uh. If emitted compiler, if emitted defaults to switch. Yeah, I got it. Okay, so I'm gonna say opam switch create 410, and that's gonna be 410. I'm just gonna cheat and never run the risk of having two different. Ah, man. Come on. Maybe I can just do 4101. There you go. That's a cool dude. Checking text messages for 30 s seconds. <laughs> oh, hilarious. La di dee, la di da. Uh, this could just not go faster. All right, cool. So let's just let it do its work and continue on. All right, so I got a connection, and uh, uh, let's go to the code where we're like reading sensor data. On sensors read. So on sense request gets a connection, reads the sensors. Then calls all on sensors read, and this is the point where you know I need to actually start writing stuff uh, to the database. So uh, let's just try and figure out what's going on here. Um, I'm accepting a connection, and wait, right? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So I did a partial. I did a curried function. So I pass the con in immediately and read sensors is going to pass in a string I believe nope it's going to pass in a stat it's going to pass in a stat and that is this data model uh, this one and let's go look at what that stat is stats so I created a type in the camel uh, gave it all pretty much all floats except this little buddy's string uh, I probably could have, like, uh, you know, done some fancy, like, date time thing. That actually is probably the right thing to do. Yeah, I don't know how to do dates in OCaml. It'd just be sweet. Date. <laughs> date. Yeah, probably not a thing. Um, shoot. Yeah, I don't know. Let's go, uh, let's go consult the docs, actually. Let's even consult the reason docs. Their docs are kind of not bad. That's not reason. Reason now. And if they're just, you know, a sugar syntax over normal camel, uh, then all should be good. My guess is there might not be a first class date data structure. Uh, date. This is yielding. No helpful results. <laughs> this is not a very blank work with reason. Yeah, I'm not using JS, man. Get out of here. That's old school. We're writing native code here. Uh, okay, so, um, OCaml date. This is pretty. Ah, batteries included, huh? Module date. Gosh, I feel like an idiot. Uh, where does that come from? What? Oh, batteries. Oh, batteries. Batteries is a like standard library replacement thing. So I'm using Core. Yeah, Jane Street. Oh, Camel Core Temp. Ugh, temp, I don't like that. Uh, 
that's weird. Okay, let's just go to... Uh, camel Core. The Planet Core. Pretty cool, Docs. I really like this little planet going on here. I think it's pretty cool. Let's check on the street and make sure it still exists. Yeah, it does exist. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So I want to go to API Docs. Right, Brit. Uh, lots of clicking is involved. Date! There it is! Son of a gun. Core date. Uh, so they have a friggin' date type. That's pretty cool. Pretty, pretty cool. Um, oh boy, I don't know if I'm going to... I'm not, like, smart enough to know how to... Um, Serialize it and deserialize it. Yeah, that would be cool. But I don't know, let's just see what happens. Like, is this even the right thing to do? Core dot date. Come on man. Work with me here. <laughs> uh red build. Did that just give me permission denied? That's not okay. Reason? What? Oh, Doom maybe? Well, yeah, I don't have Doom because I'm using the one in the sandbox. Oh, that's what I should be doing. Sandbox. Okay, I'm gonna create terminal current sandbox. The tool chain may have not loaded yet. Right. Um, we gotta let's reload the window. We did install the LSP. Hoping this time. God damn it. External command bin args bin easy. Result exit code zero. Well, that's good. Easy. Zero. So, what are the problemas, man? What are these problemas I'm hearing so much about? It gave me a little pop up. Yeah, cannot load sand. I didn't see that in the output. Did I read the wrong thing? Oh, camel platform extension. Okay, there it is. It does say it. Oh, Xcode 1. Yeah. Cannot load sandbags. Sandbags. Uh, Alright, well. Are you going to give me. What airs above? I guess I got to run it. Easy dash p. Maybe OCaml LSP just didn't make it on. Ah, oh, for crying out loud. OCaml LSP. Wait a second. No dash or a dash. What's really going on here? You're saying I could just do this? I should have done this the whole time? What an amateur. I didn't have to do this on my other machine. I mean, I guess you don't have to generally, but... <sighs> That's fine. Everything is cool. Everything is just great. But what really happened here? Didn't even have to. It's... You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> I didn't mean to click that. I meant to click this. What are you talking about? OPAM. Sw switch. Yeah. What? How could that be? I just... Ah! I must have screwed something up. Someone probably saw me doing it and said, You're screwing it up, and I didn't hear you. 
because we aren't in the same place. Okay, we're gonna just, I still want it globally available, right? Like, I'm hoping to not have this only, you know, be the only OCaml project I'm in. All right, here we go, here we go. Uh, 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 you know, this is a weird thing. Um, unable to read DB, I don't like that at all. Uh, why not? Well, don't be fooled by this DB. It's, I think it's actually something different. Um, beep, 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 beep. Oh, that's kind of cute. Uh, I think it's probably that. So easy. Ooh, looky, looky root, huh? Pseudo RMRF DB. Rad DB. Please do not create was only for that one shell, wasn't it? Everything hates me. I swore we got this thing running. It was even in the shell. No. No, it wasn't. Was it in this one? No, it was in some other random ass shell. Uh, do we want to do it again? New. Good. Docker. New. Group. Thousand. Uh, I think that happened last time. Ah, just new group, whatever. There we go. Okay, is this root again? Son of a bitch. Alright, well... What's the real error here? Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Rad build. I realize that I'm whispering as I suffer. Uh, yeah, you don't need to read it. Uh, you're ignoring it. That's fine. Sure. I'll add that to my Dune file. Dune file. Dune file. Whoa. Which Dune file, though? Bin Dune. To the file, Dune. But there are two of them, and it's just not clear which. Alright. Durs. Is that like, uh, it's Control C. I need to be doing Control Shift C, maybe? Is that what's going on? Yeah, classic. Okay, okay. Friggin' Linux, man, am I right? Am I right? Right. Uh, let's save that. Dude. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. What do you talk? What do you talk? What do you talk? What do you talk? But you got another territory. All right. Just get rid of those. Ah! You're killing me, Smalls. Permission denied. Dude. Unknown field. Durs. You just asked me to add it. You just asked me to add it. Uh, that's my that's my Dune version, Dune project two six. I think that's like pretty new. All right, let's just stay focused. Keep your eyes on the prize, Chris. Just get rid of that and go on to the next thing. All right, permission denied. I just don't like that. So I mean, it doesn't like this. This thinks it's a syntax error. That's fine. It probably is. I probably need to do like dot .t or something. But the LSP still isn't coming online. Um, finally, an interesting error. Cool. Unbound value. Core date to your JSON. So I'm using this uh, preprocessor that essentially takes you know this type definition and generates some um, code like a, like a macro if you will behind the scenes and it's saying like hey uh, you know man I don't know how to make core date work with the yojson library which is my serialization deserialization uh, and you know 
Uh, it's an interesting question. I guarantee I'm not the only one to have asked it. Uh, core date NeoJSON. Like, I don't. I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea how to do that. Uh, I would like to do that. ETG Gen. Not using ETG Gen. Uh, handling JSON data. Let's see if they got anything to say in here. Date. Beep. No date. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Date? I mean, date isn't like a JSON primitive, right? So why would they? But I don't know. That would be cool. There might be something where like, I can define how to, you know, transform in and out of fields. Let's go see. Hey, it generates JSON serializes and deserialize. I think that's supposed to be serializers. Sponsored by Evil Martians. Yeah, they do that other project. CSS modules or something. I don't know if they got cool stuff. They get cool stuff. Uh, Alright. Yeah, D BTDT type. Yeah, sure. Semantics. Here's a bunch of stuff, JSON value, object. Yeah, that's like not interesting. And those blah, blah, blah. And their mod T aliases. Variants, regular and polymorphic, are represented using arrays. The first element is a string. Well, I'm not like dealing with a variant here. Well, am I? No. Right? No. Uh. No, I don't think that's what I'm doing. Um. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Encoding very large into 64. Very large. Yeah, okay, so it didn't... It didn't seem to suggest there was a way to do it. Blast! Um, I would probably have to do it in like an intermediate model. You know? Good old intermediate model. So let's just convert this back to string. Man. You string. Permission denied. Connection failure. Yeah. Wait. Hey. The DB up. Hey, look at that. That's a DB that's up. Uh, five four. Yeah. Is the server running on localhost? Yeah, man. Uh, it's even forwarding 5432 to 5432. And, uh, ah, oh, dang. That sucks. Let's see what we're passing in as perms. Localhost. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Like we're on Linux, man. It should be the same network. And uh, what am I trying to connect with as a port? Um, probably 5432, right? Port. Port. Uh, with connection. Create connection. Yeah. 5234. Is that right? Oh, it's wrong. Five, four, three, two. Man, nice work, everybody. I don't like these errors. We'll deal with them later. Yeah, no password supplied. And I think it's just like password right now. I'm just gonna hard code it in. I need to set up other stuff that. Oh, you know what? No, it's not password. It's. Yeah. User Postgres. Come on, dude. There you go. 
Password Postgres, that's probably it. It's just dev mode. You don't care, nobody cares. Yeah, yeah. It's taking longer this time. It's nice. It's good. Uh, what I don't like is that it seems to have hung. You know? Uh, we expected... We expected to... Uh, you know... Uh, uh, make it to here. And that just, like, uh, didn't happen. So create server. What is what's the type of this? Why has this thing not loaded? What's going on? Where's my editor stuff? Let's do this again. Reload window for the 500th time. Man, this is like bumming me out. Um, okay, yeah, we gotta we gotta run this. So I'm gonna do it in a shell right here. Just relax. Here we go. Here we go. Easy dash P PWD O camel LSP version. Dev! Look at that! No one had any problem with that. Easy P. Uh, I guess it's kind of biased, so let's de bias it. Really verbose here. Oh, camel LSP. The bones are their money. Aha! It was different. The one was different. Easy, easy. Which? Easy. That, in fact, is the same easy. P. Okay, how about PWD? Um. Yeah, very good, very good, very good. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You're telling me. Hold on. Am I on crazy pills? Did I invent the piano key necktie? Okay, so that one worked. This one did not. Maybe try changing it one thing at a time. Easy. Not that one. Uh, oh, camel L L S P. Fresh aware. The other one worked with P W D. What's really going on here? Are those two strings not the same strings? There's a string. Here's a string. They're not! <gasps> Gasp! Users! What a bunch of malarkey! Who done it? This is a bug. Not my code, I'll tell you that. I mean, my code sucks. There it is. Why would you do that? Why would you hard code in a root? Uh, okay, so we're gonna be like good community citizens for a second, right? And we're gonna go to the uh, we're gonna go to the extension OCaml platform. Click into it, and here it is. So at some point, um, you know, they like they wrote this file from here. Root parse file project root easy JSON. No, that's not the one we're looking for. We're looking for when they wrote the settings. Fact, let's actually just look for settings because it's probably a TypeScript VS Code API. 
that they're calling into to flush settings. Settings create. Maybe toolchain settings create. It is in the workspace. Sandbox? Uh huh. This looks. This looks relevant. Let's go ahead and uh, put that guy open. Give him a little look ski. Key sandbox of Jason to Jason. Settings create. Uh, can you like navigate in this thing? Settings create. Um, so I don't know if you know about this, but you can use the T button in GitHub. Pretty dope. Create. I would just love to contribute something back to this toolkit. Uh, that's a function. Hey man, that just creates a record. <laughs> hey, uh, what are we looking for? We're looking for root. Root? Blast! Did I already look for root? Oh, I did. That's a test. I don't care about tests. I care about tests. Uh, come on. Come to Papa Moon. Is root. Yeah. Is root. Hmm. Not what we're looking for, I don't think. DSP test, root, root. I mean, yeah, that's the field I'm looking for. Path, root, VS code, easy. Again, not the right one. When do they write to that root? Uh, I've missed it. I've missed it. Somewhere in here they've done it. It's a test. I don't care about that one. Test root. I mean, it could be in a dependency, which is why we're not seeing it. Oof. Pop that foot. This seems maybe relevant. Uh, let's go back to settings. You're probably thinking, can't you just focus and get one thing done? Yeah, I could. I'm choosing not to. Uh, settings. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Get, what, what about set? Here we go. Uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Someone's calling this set. And workspace configuration, configuration target to JS. It's a scope. T scope. Let's set TV. I don't know what T would be. T value? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't want to search for set, though. Hmm. Well, let's at least let them know. Uh, can I just log in? I thought I was already logged in. Sign in. Yeah, look at that nice secure. You're not getting into my account. I don't think so. I don't even care about signing in in front of you. Let's see. 2FA. Six. I really hope I didn't write that. Root. Uh, let's be more specific. Uh, settings. Json. Ocaml sandbox. Dot root. Written with absolute path. Problem. I'm pretty sure. I didn't enter in the root field in workspace. No, in settings, JSON. 
well, that's not the first problem. You know, the primary state the problem. The problem is um, absolute paths in settings JSON uh, uh, broke my project. Did not did not work my project on a different computer. I'm pretty sure that uh, yeah, context. can't quite pin down where it gets written in this extension. Um, discussion. Perhaps the workspace folder Bar uh, placeholder should be used instead when creating the sandbox path. example. EG. The only difference between my two computers is users and home pretty similar so it took me a few to figure out what was up I could get into sending a patch if someone can help cool look at us just being great citizens and you know what I'm ready to actually try my own suggestion um, I'm just gonna try workspace folder reload all right oh it doesn't load into it. damn it <laughs> uh no easy project was found um was looking from source fresh aware or not well I actually think source fresh aware should have a package JSON in it. Right? Yeah. Um what was it in there before? Wrong button. <sighs> kind, easy, maybe I can just omit root for crying out loud, just <laughs> Uh, what am I missing? Unable, extension unable to find OCaml LLSP automatically. Please select the package manager. Yeah, I'm using easy. Great. So you're just going to work now? Is that what I'm hearing? Ah, beautiful. Beautiful. Okay. Nice. Well, we didn't get too much done, but... I think it's time to break. Um, if you come back and watch this, thanks. But you probably shouldn't. It was pretty slow going. Yeah, you know, most of the time doing stuff like this is slow going, and that's fine. But uh, yeah, we'll pick up later this week. Thanks. Bye bye.